in it for a treat today. We have, uh, amongst yeah. you students, yeah. multiple majors from multiple colleges, we have an Enactus team. If you're not familiar with an Enactus, you've got to get super familiar with an Enactus. It's one of the opportunities that the school provides for you to travel abroad, to do phenomenal social entrepreneurship projects, to come up with your own project, to get funded. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's crazy what the school offers that so many of the students don't know about. You're going to hear about a little bit about that today. We're going to present to you two projects that we presented and competed with over 550 schools in the nation and won first prize. So really good. Uh, it's awesome the job that they did. Uh, and there's, uh, they competed in Kansas City for that. And next week, we leave actually tomorrow night, we're going to go to San Jose next week to compete against 36 other countries to, with their number one teams uh, to, for what's called the World Cup competition. So your students may be uh, coming home with the, uh, the, big, the big bowl. Actually, uh, they will be coming home with the big bowl. <laughs> but, uh, so I'd like to present to you, I'm going to have them line up. The, the team can <coughs> Okay, so uh, what we're going to do, we're going to have the team, they're going to present to you, it's going to come with a video, with our amazing videographer James has put this together. In fact, there were some changes that we made last night that he just did overnight, pretty amazing. But, uh, it, and they're going to present with the video. I'd like you to think about what they're presenting about, and at the end, it's only 17 minutes, it's a set time, and after, at the end, I'd like you all to open it up for questions. And the questions that I need you to ask, and Aloha knows this all too well, is some questions about their projects. What are they doing with their projects? Basically validating their projects. Did you really do this project and how did you do this and what does this mean and how did you come up with this and how did this happen? How did this start? Anything like that. So if y'all can ask some very pertinent questions to what they did and how they did it with their projects, that would be great. So without further ado, we'd like to welcome the team from BYU Hawaii. Our Enactus team conducted a needs assessment that analyzed stillborn deaths. We identified economic, social, and environmental solutions to prevent stillbirths. As stated by the World Health Organization, there are 2.6 million stillbirths worldwide. That's 7,000 per day. This means, while we're on stage, 106 stillbirths will happen. This is unacceptable. In response to this crisis, our first Enactus experience began with my wife. While working as a midwife in Vanuatu, she cared for women, like Natalia, who experienced prenatal complications. Due to the lack of proper medical equipment, my wife could not find Natalia's baby's heart rate. After a near-death experience for both Natalia and her baby, miraculously, both survived. We recognize the need for communication between the baby, mother, and medical professionals. However, most clinics across Polynesia are not medically equipped to support that communication. And so we leveraged our resources and partnered with the founder of Ruby, Dr. Anton Bowden, who developed the world's most highly deflective piezo-resistant nickel-infused silicone string gauge sensors. These patented sensors measure the baby's kicks and fetal movement. This is important because the World Health Organization stated two out of three women see a decrease in fetal movement before having a stillbed. And the majority of stillbeds are preventable. By providing an early detection, we empower expecting mothers to know when to seek medical attention so local doctors can save a baby. Our team found that millions of dollars of prenatal equipment can be substituted by a $20 eco-friendly ruby band. Our financial stability is because of the low cost combined with the resource sharing model. The model is, 
after a consumer is done using their Ruby, they can send it back to our Enactus team and we'll ship that same Ruby to a clinic in a developing country. The next time the original consumer is expecting, Ruby Life will send her a brand new band for free. Our teams empower local doctors and midwives to identify mothers who need the bands. Because the cost is built into the price per unit, this process is sustainable. Most importantly, we are working with the local clinics in creating a volunteer for Ruby model. In return for receiving the bands, expecting mothers will volunteer at the clinics. Therefore, expecting mothers will not just receive the free Ruby, but they are empowered to give back to the clinic. Our Enactus team oversees the entirety of our nonprofit, including helping Dr. Bowden applying for grants, surveying thousands of mothers, creating informational booklet educating mothers, and most importantly, the nonprofit is facilitated with local medical professionals, making this a long term sustainable solution. Ruby's nonprofit is contributing to these United Nations goals. Although this project is only in phase one, we will provide expected mothers a life changing device they previously could not access or afford. Our vision is not only to be a change in this generation, but to bring a generation to life. From the islands of Polynesia, we traveled to the green rice paddies of the Philippines, where Rice Lab Project was launched. Growing up in Kambanga, my grandfather Arturo worked hard on our farm to provide for our family. But he couldn't make enough money to provide for our needs. Our research showed Filipino farmers earn $71 a month, which is not enough to sustain their families. And the average age of farmers is 57. If we don't act now, the Philippines will have a huge deficit in food supply within the next decade. Rice Up's mission is to innovate the system of Philippine farming. This year, we assess needs by interviewing 127 farmers in Pampanga, then build a profile for each of them. Our findings were consistent with the Philippine national data. The data showed the major issues we needed to address. Debt and financial literacy. Underutilized technology and little direct market access. Inefficient farming production. Aging farmers food waste, and climate impacts like typhoons. Our Rise Up team has addressed each of these issues by leveraging existing resources and establishing partnerships with both government and private companies. Our solution is the Sustainability Roadmap. This innovates a healthy agricultural ecosystem that empowers farmers, consumers, and local government institutions, all while focusing on these UN goals. First, debt. Farmers take on 15% in monthly interest to purchase their seeds, fertilizers, and tools. To pay off this debt, they give up 80% of their profits and are forced to borrow more money just to survive. Second, access to technology. Most farmers are still using traditional methods of farming. And without direct access to the market, farmers sell their products to middlemen for less than the fair market price, leaving them with little to no disposable income. Third, to address inefficient production, we introduced three systems for our farmers to grow high-value crops, increase income, and reduce water usage by 30%. So this year, we started the first farm school in Lubao. For three months, farmers trained in self-development and profitable farming to become agricultural entrepreneurs. Children of our farmers who teach at the farm school are paid by our partner, the Upward Bound Business School. Rise Up established a Tech for Ed Center in our farm school in partnership with the Department of Information and Communications Technology. They support it with training, equipment, and a 20,000 US dollars digital platform. In August, 27 of our farmers graduated from the farm school. Currently, we have 50 more farmers enrolled. In November, we'll add an additional 2,100 farmers in Dubao City. The government pays us $240 per graduating farmer who we bring to the course. Because of our farm school success, the Department of Agriculture is working with us to develop our RISE productivity program using their farmer field school platform where 25 students will graduate this October. Another partner is Capital, the only crowdfunding platform that helps finance farmers. Our farmers 
now have access to microloans, moving from the crippling 15% monthly interest rate to now only 2%. For a 10,000 peso loan, Mr. Roman used to pay 19,000 pesos, but through Cropital, he only pays 11,200. Last April, I lived with one of our farmers, Nanay Lily. From our financial training, she cut farming costs, which enabled her to start a bakery. Now, she has found more ways to support her family. Lily and Manuel had been planting rice for decades until a social enterprise called Rice Up taught village farmers how to diversify and practice organic farming. But thanks to Rice Up, she won't have to deal with middlemen anymore. The enterprise is setting up a small post in the market where its member farmers could sell their produce on a weekly basis. We work with our partner, the former president of the Philippines, now Speaker of the House, Gloria Arroyo. Through her influence, the local municipalities worked with us to establish two model farms where farmers implement integrated farming. We wrote a bill which she is now sponsoring in Congress to encourage young Filipinos to become social entrepreneurs. The Department of Agriculture has committed to giving us a rotavator machine worth 50,000 US dollars. This will generate an annual revenue of 90,000 US dollars, of which 36,000 dollars will go to rise up. 27 sustainable businesses have been created. An example is Mr. Cornelio, who plants and sells high-value crops, while other farmers sell non-farming products. Rice up farmers have improved from only $71 a month to $250. And now, some farmers make over $500 a month. This is more than a 600% increase. In fact, in 2019, our farmers' projected monthly income could reach up to $700 a month. This year, we are partnering with local restaurants and Jollibee, the largest food service corporation in Asia, simplifying the supply chain process and ensuring that we have buyers for our produce. Jollibee trains our farmers. Most Filipino farmers do not know how to use smartphones or computers. So, the next step in our sustainability roadmap teaches them how to sell their products in the digital marketplace. Our farm school conducts weekly trainings in digital technology to teach the farmers and to engage the youth to make farming a more attractive profession. The government pays us $240 per farmer and our 12 graduates are now on our marketing team. In April, we held our first Rise Up Bayanian conference where more than 300 people attended. We trained 30 youth in farming development and e-commerce in Pampanga. We are making agriculture, agri, Cool! Sure. In fact, we launched the Rise Up app this year, where farmers can now upload photos of their products and sell directly to the consumers. This year, Rise Up has created 26 jobs, occupied mostly by 18 to 30 year olds, to run the farm school and manage the model farms. Another step in our roadmap is addressing food waste. Due to inefficient processes, farmers lose 40% of their crops during production, processing, and distribution. We solve the waste problem in two ways, by following the food waste protocol and using the farm-to-table model. We utilize food waste as livestock feed, then processing the rest in vermicompost feeds, using worms to generate biofertilizer. Our farmers have gathered 34 metric tons of waste from households and public markets, generating 27 metric tons of biofertilizer. Farmer Mrs. Fe have created her own vermicompost facility. This year, we generated $18,810 worth of biofertilizer, which is a 50% savings from their total fertilizer costs. They also sell the extra biofertilizer for $250 per metric ton, increasing their income by another 100%. We have more orders than we can fulfill. The last step in our roadmap is addressing climate impact. This rainy season, Farmers lost 60% of their crops due to raging typhoons. We empowered farmers to develop additional revenue streams so that they can earn despite destructive weather. They identified other skills resulting in a new Rise Up restaurant operated by our farmers. They also now sell other products like handmade shoulder bags using local materials. We are now taking pre-orders. 
We also introduced hydroponics and aquaponics farming system. 127 farmers are now learning the, these methods, producing high value crops to diversify their income, rain or shine, all while just using not less 95% of water. To promote our farmers' success, Rise Up has shared our stories around the world. We were invited and sponsored by the United Nations to speak at the World Youth Conference in Malaysia in July 2017. In Hawaii, we partnered with the Hawaii Pacific University Inactis team to develop the Rise Up project on our island of Oahu in partnership with Hawaii Senator Mike Gabbard. We are working with the Office of the President of the Philippines and the Department of Agriculture for replication of our model farms in five provinces. They have appointed a Rice Up coordinator to ensure government resources for Rice Up expansion, saving us thousands of dollars. Last month, we met with the Philippine President's daughter, who is the mayor of Davao City, and one of her city councillors who is assigned to work with us. We are promoting peace and development through agriculture in a program called Peace Incorporated. This is an Arms to Farms project where 40 farmer cooperatives made up of many former members of rebel groups and 800 indigenous people are trained in our farm school curriculum. This program is now part of their city's long-term development plan. In addition to winning the number of awards, we were featured in a 9 minutes news interview as well as a 25 minutes international documentary showing Rice House impact in Pampanga. invest highly on ma ma machines, machineries, innovation, and young people. We need more young people to invest their time, energy, and resources in farming. That's why I see the Philippines to be the agricultural powerhouse in Southeast Asia. And that will happen soon. And we have people like you to count on to make that happen. One big question. Farmers and scholars conduct weekly lectures and dialogue about how they can scale up production and practice modern ways of overcoming their challenges. We are also collaborating with the Angeles University Foundation and Actus team. They help us develop our marketing and social enterprise in Pampanga. Rise Up has four main revenue streams. By the end of next year, first, the farm school is projected to earn over $500,000. Second, the mobile app where we earn 3% of sales, projected to earn $41,000. Third, enterprise development, including our restaurant and sales of non-farming products. And last, the Rotovator machine, as part of our mechanized farming initiative, earning $36,000 per year. What began as a simple mission, to bring capital and a new market to farmers, Rice Up has evolved into an agricultural ecosystem. Farmers now have a bright future. I think we can escape the poorness of our, of our place or every family that will uh, engage in planting through rice up. Again, I will say thank you and we love you all. In summary of our impact, with Ruby, which is only in phase one, we have created five new jobs. One powerful partnership with Ruby Life are working with 24 different NGO leads, medical clinics, and government officials, and we are currently in production to begin delivering thousands of vans to women who need them across the world, creating a generational impact. With Rise Up's phase three development, now being replicated in 11 provinces, we have cost savings of $166,000. Indirect financial impact of $200,500 with 33 partners, including government entities. Impacted 805 farmers. 26 jobs and 27 businesses generated. An Enactus project that revolutionizes an entire community cannot be measured in a day, a month, or a year. We created an organization that empowers not only an individual or a community, but an entire nation, and soon, many nations. This is who we are. This, this is what we do. We are BYU Hawaii and Actus. Aloha!
Rise Up is actually sustainable even without us managing the business in the Philippines. The, we created a standard operating procedure that the Philippine team can follow. Actually, they created existing and, and independent two farmer association without us managing the project in the Philippines. And not only that, we have four different revenue streams wherein we can use that money to sustain the project. And as of now, we are replicating into 11 provinces this month. Oh, also with that, like we are partnering with the Hawaii Pacific University as well as the government in here, like um, Hawaii Senator Mike Gabbard as well as the mayor of Kauai, because the agricultural problems in the Philippines are the same worldwide. Did you know that Hawaii can, la uh, can only last up to eight days without import from, mm -hmm. other, um, from other places? And so we need to replicate it in here, and the government here sees that as well. So I heard you say you are rest up mainly it's applied in Philippines right now, then? Right? Like, do you, do you plan to do it to other countries right now? Do you have anything? When we went to Malaysia to speak in the United Nations, we've received actually five requests from Malaysia, uh, India, and other countries. But we're creating a model so that we can sustain it once it's replicated in other countries. So we want it first to be uh, in domestic market in the Philippines, and then in the next five years, we will definitely uh, impact Asia and the Pacific region. Hello. Yeah. Uh, I think what you can say is amazing. Uh, but how do you find how do you finance the project? We have leveraged partnerships with government entities to start with and other private, private industries like the Cropital to help finance our farmers with really low interest costs. But now that we have our revenue streams coming in, we can finance the project a lot more effectively even if those partners were to go away. And with Ruby, it's financed through the consumers, making it sustainable. Because the product is sold for $300 and it only costs $20 to make, we have a large margin to, to be able to give these bands to the women who need them. Um, and, and in fact, when we send them a band, it's on average 2.2 years before a woman would have another baby. And so we've built that into our finances with Ruby and Dr. Bowden. They get in there for free. Actually, the government pays us for every farmer that graduates in that farm school. For, um, for every farmer that graduates, it's $240. And this added to our revenue stream, which makes it sustainable. And because the government sees this as a model, we wrote a bill that, can, that will be passed in Congress this year so that it can be institutionalized not only in Pampanga but throughout the 81 provinces of the Philippines. Actually, on November 3, we will be teaching 2,100 farmers and most of them are members of the rebel groups, no? Uh, they're changing the guns into plows. So that's really good. And right now, with the success of the project, with our, with our first 50 farmers, now our second 50 farmers, 30 of them are between the ages of 15 to 28. So the youth is coming back. Just by raise of hands, how many of you, when you grow up, want to be a farmer? There you go, we have one, that's awesome. That's what we're changing in the Philippines. Because when you think of a farmer, sometimes we think that it's an attractive profession. But what Rise Up is doing is we are making it an attractive profession, like agriculture, for the younger people to be our farmers. Because they are our future. So, I thought it was really interesting how you said how Hawaii in itself can only last eight days without no, importing from yeah. other countries. Is that the same for most countries, or is that specifically kind of the Hawaiian Islands with like Philippines? Like, how many nations struggle with providing for their own people without having to? I mean, is that the goal of a country to be self-sustainable? Because I actually have some really big like. I have a really cool family connection through farming, so I'm actually like really interested in farming and might go into 
that, but I'm just wondering how many countries around here are not self-sustainable that you know of? From the data we've gathered, we know that that's the fact for Hawaii, eight days. But for the Philippines, we know that it can be self-sustainable if the economy can stay, the agricultural economy can stabilize itself. And that's why we've added other revenue streams for the farmers so that they can continue to provide food despite, you know, despite bad weather that destroyed their crops, like our bags that are now for sale and also the restaurant this, that, that'll be coming up. Completely run by farmers, by the way. And the new innovation about food security is actually decreasing food waste. One third of the food we produce goes only to the waste. So Rise Up created this program wherein we can still uh, have, uh, uh, we can preserve food, we can save uh, food, or we can manage food resources and also use those waste into beneficial uses like biofertilizer. Just with a real quick follow-up question. So with that, like, because it was interesting how being in a lecture, you all of a sudden shifted from the band aspect to, like, farming. I was kind of like, whoa, it's like plot twist. <laughs> but, like, what is kind of your main goal at the moment? Is it more, like, because you're kind of, you've got these two, like, the band, the silver situation, and then, like, the farming. Are these kind of, like, you're just intertwining them into one, or are they two separate entities of your business? We're one big Enactus uh, group here at BYU Hawaii, and we have 11 projects going on right now, including Ruby and Rice Up. So for this, for this purpose, we have showed that Ruby, which is in phase one, is already creating impact, while Rice Up, our project in phase three, is already creating this much impact. So it's just two different projects within the same team. Uh, with Ruby, it started with a phone call to the clinic which my wife was at in Vanuatu. And then we met with representatives from Tonga, Samoa, uh, Papua New Guinea, and many other countries throughout Polynesia to further our expansion. In fact, not only are we concentrating on the islands in uh, the Pacific, we are actually focusing on Africa as of now. Probably some of you know Kone, who was a former Enactus member, who has a hospital, a clinic back in Africa. Seeing the impact of this product on expecting mothers, we are delivering bands to mothers in Africa so they could also be able to. And we can use you guys too. When we find opportunities, you guys will be the people to just be able to help take this opportunity out there so that they can also benefit from it. You mentioned that the Ruby band was reused from mothers expecting the United States who purchased the product for themselves and they give it up. Once a Ruby band has been passed on, does it get multiple uses after that, or is it, I mean, how many uses does a ruby band tend to last? <laughs> this is incredible. So it, it will last um, a, a few dozen uses, and we want to avoid e-waste. That's why it's an eco-friendly band. So once it is no longer usable, it's simply sent back to our manufacturing, and we re-screen uh, print the sensors and then can use that same material, the same battery, all the same electrical components and the, the um, microcontroller on the same band and then continue to give it to women who need it. And um, just for those sensors, it's only a cost of less than a dollar. You mentioned that you were cutting off middlemen from purchasing goods. Is there any resistance to your project? And if so, do you have any plans to Yes, there were resistance. Mm -hmm. But our farmers are more powerful. Um, because if we have an inclusive business model, wherein the producers, even the traders, are involved in the ecosystem, uh, just uh, to, to, to provide the context, we are not replacing the middlemen. We are actually creating an inclusive, healthy ecosystem, business model in the Philippines. They're still part of the business model. However, it's a fair share. Now, when the Farmers knows that they will be paid well. They will produce quality products. And that's what we've seen in Pampanga. And now because they've, they've, they are producing quality products, more demands are coming, and more uh, business opportunities are coming also to the middleman. But now, we already talked with them. We made the dialogue with the government. The law is with us. And they agreed that it's fair to create this kind of business model. One more question, if anybody has a question. Let's do a question. Uh, just on uh, Ruby, you 
you're giving a new uh, band to a first world <coughs> entity and you give them their leftovers to a third world <coughs> it just doesn't seem kind of socially correct. I would have thought with the cost of the band, you would have given a new one to both parties. It just, you know, just to be fair, I felt kind of a common um, um, attitude to, to do things instead of the handy thing. We want to empower the mothers in the developing countries, and we know through this model, uh, through our needs assessment, through our financial analysis, that this is the best way for us to give the product to as many women as can. Um, and speaking with our team on the ground in, in these developing countries, um, th they don't mind. Um, Tom, Tom's model, my wife grew up in, in, in Zimbabwe, and there's a lot, there's a, there's, there are a lot of problems with that, and so we've done a lot of case studies and understanding of, of different resource sharing models, and we are doing everything we can to um, not just lower costs, but to empower as many women as we can, and, and to make as, as big of a generational impact as we can on the lives of these families. And the government's so interested because every stillbirth costs the government of these developing countries $4,000. And so if we are able to give these bands to more people, um, they will also have that cost savings. Thank you. So uh, now I'd like to, uh, we'll start with Nate here. Just a couple, minute and a half. Uh, why, when did you start in Actus and what have you learned and why do you like an Actus? Uh, all right. <laughs> so it's embarrassing, but I started in Actus eight years ago. <laughs> um, it was, I, I took a few years off school. Um, so I, I started eight years ago. I worked with the John Moso project and I, I loved it. Um, I got involved with Ruby while I was living in Japan and um, took off school for a little bit. The professors won't agree, but I think that's a great thing to do. And um, started this business, brought it back to BYU Hawaii, <coughs> met Professor Rogers, um, and really dived back into an actus because the leadership skills that you get, the camaraderie, um, the ideation that you get to have in the class, the relationships with the professors, um, and also the team that you can build to, to uh, bring a larger impact to your current idea were all things that I valued and wanted for Ruby. And so the last six months we've been going going pretty hard with our Enactus team to, to create this nonprofit. Uh, before the Enactus started, we didn't have a nonprofit for Ruby. It was all about the, the for-profit and, and making money and diving into the medical community. And um, here, we were really able to work with um, some of the professors here that have connections, also with the career fair, the APCC. You guys should all go to that next March. And, and there, the, the amount of resources that this school has is, is why we were able to make such an incredible impact with our nonprofit. So I'm, I'm, I'm really grateful for Enactus and I'd, I'd recommend joining. So my, my name is Joseph. I'm currently the president of the Enactus organization here at BYU Hawaii. And I joined about two years ago, almost two years ago, January of 2017, when I came into Rise Up. I didn't really know much about Enactus at that time. I just knew that there was Rise Up and it was connected to the Philippines and I wanted to help my country because I lived there for 12 years when I was young before moving to the States. But one of the biggest reasons I, that I've seen continue to be involved with it is because you know, we always talk about building our future you know, in college or after college. But I realized that you know, after meeting all these people around the world in Anactis, we're building it now, right here. And especially in this institution at BYU Hawaii, I came in specifically for the international business focus that they have in this, in this, very, in this center. And I noticed that there's many more people out there that want to help, not just the saints, want to help build the kingdom of God and fulfill the mission of the school. And I saw that through Enactus, you know, members, non-members alike, working together from all around the world to bring, to bring goodness, to bring healing, to bring impact and help develop the lives of many more people. And I think that's ultimately what's going to allow the gospel to penetrate many more parts of the world through the organization that we have here. And Enactus sets up the pattern so that we can build that. 
And so if you want to be a part of it, let us know, any of us know. There's many NACTUS members throughout campus. All of our professors are available. Great Ideas Competition, Empower Your Dreams Competition. All those things are designed to help you build to something much greater. That's where Rise Up started. A small idea, Great Ideas Competition two years ago. There's a, an active class every Wednesday from four to six. You're welcome to come to. You don't have to be part of the class. Particularly for uh, five to six is when everybody works on projects. Mm -hmm. And it's in this room right here. Hey, uh, uh, Prince, Princess. can you tell about uh, what you did in Congo? Oh, yeah. yeah. So, it's kind of crazy. I did political science. I don't know why I'm here, but at a point in time, I felt, I, I know myself to be born as a, as a leader. But I cannot lead when I don't have the means. If you come from a third world country, or if you serve in a third country, a third world country as a mission, you know that um, people have good heart, but they don't have the means. So being part of an artist, I've been able to see opportunities that we have. Because trust me, somebody, a poor man from China, who doesn't have money, probably doesn't have a job, could come to Africa and still make it. Why? Because the opportunities are there. And being part of an artist, I see. I don't have a project right now, but I've seen so many opportunities. And my mom and my family who are... No, no, no. What project did you do? You did a project. <laughs> so, <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's crazy. I don't know how... So in 2017, I joined an artist team to be able to go to Congo out of service to be able to help <coughs> to help a former enactist mem member who has his project running to be able to help them teach them about e-commerce. They use their phones a lot, Facebook and stuff, but they didn't know how to make money out of it. And through our project, they've been able to see a transition from not just using the Wi-Fi to go on Facebook and Instagram, but using it to be able to make money. And they are happy, some of them are being able to create their own project and making money out of it. Elvin? Princess. Oh, you win? No? Oh, no. Okay, okay. I'll go real quick. Uh, my name is Princess. I'm from the Philippines. And I wish I joined Enactus when I was a freshman. Mm -hmm. I keep telling Catherine, because Catherine was the previous um, Enactus president before I, he told me about, she told me about all these projects. And I'm like, I wish I knew this when I was a freshman. And I'm really grateful for the opportunity that um, I was able to join Enactus through Rise Up. It really definitely helped me with um, what my, I feel like my purpose is, um, what my major is, and most importantly with our school motto, enter to learn and go forth to serve. And that just really helped me in fulfilling that. Yeah. I'm your major. I'm actually an exercise sports science major. So no matter what your major is, you can join and act as. Like a lot of the people probably think like, oh, it's only for business majors or maybe social work. But whatever your major is, each and every one of you, there's a need in your community. And you can be the one to start that. And Enactus can help you with that. So let me just say, so Elvin came to school two years ago as a freshman. He spoke. <laughs> Uh, he speaks English a little bit now, <laughs> but uh, this poor farm boy, literally, raised by his grandpa, and came here with, you know, not much at all, gets in and finds out about the Great Ideas Competition, has this idea about how are we, how can I empower farmers? Farmers are the people that feed everyone, but get, that, that live the poorest. What in the world is that about, right? They're the one everybody depends on for, for food, but doesn't. Get, get, you know, paid reasonable. So he thought, let's change that. So it started off really simple as an app, you know, and I'm gonna let him tell more about this, but it's grown into what you've seen. <coughs> Literally, we have the former president being the partner. I mean, the, when the, the mayor of that Davao city came, they said, hey, Elvin, can you come to Kauai? I mean, it's amazing where, where this has gone. He's, he wrote the bill. The bill that's being put up before the Congress in the Philippines, he wrote it. Uh, and this is it now a sophomore, and we just hope that he graduates <laughs> at BYU. It's just amazing, and it all started with the great ideas that it has an idea. You don't have to graduate. You, you don't have to. It's nice. So that's, that's what, <laughs> what, what, what an act is con to, con fuel if you have a great idea. And then two, the, the work behind it. Elvin, go ahead and tell oh, about this. Will be short. But yeah, uh, <laughs> I always say that my American dream started with 8-8. I, when I arrived in the United States, Hawaii, here, 
Uh, the only money in my pocket is 88 pesos, which is just $1.6 dollars. But now I have more than 88 reasons to celebrate and to be grateful for what I have and my team with me. No? Uh, yeah, it's, this is my tribute to my grandfather and I know he's happy and he's watching too. <laughs> and uh, this is a tribute for all farmers. If, uh, for two years, we were able to return four times now in the Philippines. And whenever you see the smile, on the faces of the farmers, that is that is that means a lot more than what money can do. No? And we are so grateful that BYOY has supported us all the way. Um, we don't have much resources; we have the passion and idea. But now, seeing that this year we will more, we will have more than two thousand three hundred farmers that will be impacted. That means a lot. Uh, before I end this, uh, one farmer, before we left in the Philippines, am I right? My grammar is good. So before we leave the Philippines last August, one farmer uh, came to me and said, oh, Elvin, uh, thank you so much for doing this. Um, we didn't expect that there's still hope in our lives. Because we thought we're just farmers. We are farmers. <laughs> that That's a good one. So if you want to join, rise up, we still need people. We are 18 in the team, but the team is growing and we need more. You are part of a world class uh, uh, team. And please like us on Facebook. <laughs> rise up, you have farmers. R-I-C-E, up, U-P, farmers. Yeah. And Ruby Kicks. So. And Ruby Kicks. Yeah. 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 One, one other thing. This isn't supposed to be like an active sales pitch. So if, I'm sorry if it is, like you guys don't have to join. Um, we just, we're just saying this is stuff that we wish we did. And I wanna mention one other thing that is something that you could use as students. I was telling Ty this the other day. Um, not only is an a good resource, but you saw we were talking a lot about cost savings with Rice Up. So there's a program, you could talk with Sister Lundgren. Um, it's the internship program and Myself and Elvin and Rice Up. Um, also, Jed Rawson, who spoke two weeks ago. I'm guessing you guys are all in the class. You, you saw the Amazon guy. All of us are looking for interns. You take this class, you get a cost savings of half of your tuition. Would anyone here want to pay half of their tuition? Yeah, I, I did it and it was really nice. So, you save a, thousand, a little over $1,200 and you put in 120 hours. And so you're literally making $10 an hour in savings. Does that make sense? Um, so I, I would just recommend, if you want to not just have a $10 an hour janitor job or one of these BYU jobs where you just kind of sit and hang out, and you want to actually learn something that you want to be a part of, I would recommend contacting me, Elvin, Jed, or whatever you're wanting to do, and tell them, hey, I'll work for free for 120 hours for you. They'll say yes, and then you'll get paid or have a cost savings of $1,200 for your next semester. Can I have just two points? Just two. Uh, the competition will be in October 9 to 11. Oh, yeah. Please pray for us. We believe in the power of prayers. But we'll do our best to represent you. And you can uh, watch. And you can watch live uh, October 11. It will be okay. 2 p.m. California time. 11 here. 11 here. And please pray that we'll be in the finals because only four teams will be in the finals. But we know we'll be in the finals. Of course. So. <laughs> Thank you for listening.